Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, and we're finally getting to a 55th anniversary uh, celebration video of Quentin Collins, and yes, I know, Quentin's uh, 55th anniversary was in December of last year, but I mean, he showed up in December, so I feel like we can celebrate, his, you know, the, the anniversary of him, you know, from December through November of this year. Um, I meant to have gotten to this much sooner, but I only recently read this book. I just finished it today, which is the last day of July. Um, that's how far ahead I am on these videos. So I am reviewing today Barnabas Collins and Quentin's Demon by Marilyn Ross. This was published in 1970, actually came out in very early 1970, and this is the first book to feature Quentin Collins as a character. Um, Quentin Collins does appear on some of the cover, a few of the covers before this one, but, uh, I haven't read those, so this is not my first one with Quentin, though, because I have, uh, read slash listened to a few of the later ones in the Marilyn Ross series, but anyway. So this one is about this young woman named Laura Balfour, and she's come from Philadelphia to visit Quentin Collins at his invitation. Quentin was a big fan of her father's music, especially this one particular waltz. Um, and so he got into correspondence with her father. Uh, her father ultimately passes away and then, uh, which leaves Laura very orphaned, like, you know, typical gothic heroine. And she's invited to come to Collinwood. So she arrives at Collinwood, she meets the mysterious Barnabas Collins, and the very small Collins family in this one, which seems to be a thing with, uh, Marilyn Ross's. There's only three Collinses besides Barnabas that, uh, you know, are in this book. There's Quentin and his younger brother, Conrad, who is, uh, an interesting sort of character. Um, and there's also their great aunt Erica, who, uh, she's, you know, she's really old. She's also suffering from a bit of mental illness. And also she has a reputation for being a witch. And, uh, that causes a lot of, uh, tensions and stuff. There's also, uh, a young woman that cares for Aunt Erica and has eyes for Quentin. And, uh, and that kind of mostly rounds out our main cast of characters. So, not long after Laura arrives at Collinwood, she is attacked by this mysterious beast, this wolf-like creature, and it soon becomes a question of, is there a werewolf on the grounds of Collinwood? Not to mention, what happened to Quentin's uh, wife, who died mysteriously with her throat ripped out? Uh, Mary Collins. So, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of tensions in this one. And this is not the first one with a werewolf. Of course, there is also the foe of Barnabas Collins, which I've read a couple times. I still need to review that one sometime. Uh, I need to review all the ones that I've read previously, but, uh, I've only, re I've only reviewed a few of these Marilyn Rosses, uh, which if you'd like to check them out, they are in, uh, my Dark Shadows, uh, playlist, which this one will be added to that, too. So, um, I thought this was kind of an interesting one. It was nice, like a lot of them, it, it was nice because it has so many familiar elements of Dark Shadows that... Uh, you know, it's, it's like returning home, but also you get a lot of different things because it's the Marilyn Ross version of things. So, uh, we have Quentin listening to a gramophone with music. It's not Quentin's theme, it's her, her father's waltz, but, you know, we have that. That's a little reminiscent. Uh, the way Quentin is described in this book, he looks like David Selby. He looks like, you know, Quentin, especially on the cover. He's described pretty much just like that, and the way he dresses and everything, so. Conrad is actually described very similar to how Edward is pictured, and also, you know, how Edward appears in the 1897 storyline, except for he's younger than Quentin, which Edward was not. So, I thought that was kind of interesting. I wonder if that was intentional, or at least intentional that they used this photograph, so. Not to mention, Laura is also described as blonde. And I kind of wonder if Laura wasn't, her name wasn't selected to be a reference to uh, Laura Parker, so. But yeah, there's a lot of earmarks that, you know, like I said, made this book very familiar. Not all of them are like that, though, but I think enough of them are. 
So you get that familiarity, uh, but also with some difference. I gave this book four stars. I thought it was pretty good. It's not the best for sure. Not my favorite, but it's it's definitely up there. So I did really enjoy this one. So um, I'm not sure when I'm going to read some more Marilyn Ross ones. Uh, they seem to be very far and in between because, let's see, what was the last one I listened to? I think it was because uh, I actually read this book along with listening to the audiobook, which was really cool. So I got to, it's like getting to read along with uh, Catherine Lee Scott. So that was really awesome. Um, and you can tell that when she did these, she had a lot of fun with it. So um, that's really cool. But uh, I think the last Marilyn Ross one I had listened to was um, Barnabas Quentin and the Grave Robbers, which is one of the ones I don't have physically. I have all the books, but two physically, and it's that one and the one right before it, Barnabas Quentin and Dr. Jekyll's son. So, but anyway, that's my review, and uh, I'm hoping to get to another Quentin video sometime this year before December, so hopefully it'll be sooner than later, but um, I have no idea. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, until next time, stay safe and stay spooky. Oh yeah, by the way, so we're not dressed very dark shadowsy today. It's rather hot, but I am wearing my Barnabas Coleman's ring, so perfect for the occasion. Anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see you then. Bye. -bye. <laughs>